Hey everyone, in this AP Chem series video, we're going to take a look at some common AP Chemistry sample problems involving mass spectrometry. So remember that a mass spectrometer separates a sample of atoms or molecules by their masses, and then it produces a graph or a spectrum like the one shown here for zirconium. Since the only thing that I put through the spectrometer was zirconium atoms, then each peak here represents the different isotopes of zirconium. So in the sample, I've got some zirconium 90, 91, 92, 94, and 96. I can also see based on the peak heights that zirconium 90 was the most abundant, the most common type of isotope, whereas 96 was the least. So now that we've reviewed a little bit, let's talk about how AP Chemistry will typically use mass spectrometry in its questions. So almost all of the time, AP Chemistry will ask how the observed peaks in a mass spectrum like this one for zirconium relate to the average atomic mass of that element. We've always got access to our average atomic mass because it's on the periodic table. Here zirconium's average mass is 91.224. Now you've got some options when it comes to explaining how these peaks give you this average number right here. The first option is doing the math. This is something called a weighted average calculation. You've probably learned it before in your introductory chemistry class. It involves taking each isotope's mass, factoring in how abundant those isotopes are, and that's really important to a weighted average. Here, if you do that calculation, we get 91.35, pretty close to what the periodic table reports, 91.224. This video is not gonna go in detail on this calculation, but it is an option. A much faster way is to simply look at the peak heights. What I mean by that is the weighted average. So the average you see on the periodic table, it's always gonna be closer to whichever isotopes are most abundant or whichever isotopes have the tallest peaks. So here for zirconium, I know the average has to be somewhere between 90 and 96, but because the 90 isotope is way more common, there's lots more of it, it's gonna pull that weighted average closer to the mass of 90, maybe somewhere here in between 90 and 92. Again, we already know that answer from the periodic table. The average comes in right where you would expect it to be, closer to the more abundant 90 peak for a weighted average of 91.2. Here's a different mass spectrum for a sample of naturally occurring copper. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can follow this type of thinking and make a guess for what the average atomic mass might be for copper. So here's what you should have been thinking. I know the average has to be between 63 and 65 because those are the only two isotopes. However, since the copper 63 is way more abundant, the peak is much taller, it's gonna factor in more. It has a heavier weighting when calculating the average. That means my average mass is gonna be closer to 63 than it is to 65. So somewhere up in this range between 63 and 64. If you check that on a periodic table, you'll find copper's mass is 63.546, just where we predicted. So let's close the video with a typical AP multiple choice question using these ideas. It says, which of the following elements would have the mass spectrum represented below? Again, pause the video and try this yourself before listening to me go over the answer. So the first thing I need here is to look up these elements on the periodic table and see what their average atomic masses are. So I've got that done already, osmium, germanium, arsenic, and hafnium. So let's start by taking a look at hafnium. They're trying to confuse you with this atomic number of 72, which does correspond with one of the taller peaks in the sample. But you've got to remember that 72 is the atomic number that's just the protons, that's not what these peaks measure. These peaks are measuring mass and hafnium's mass is 178. That's nowhere near the masses of 70 to 76. So I can rule out hafnium right off the bat. Same thing with osmium, it's got an average mass of 190. So now I have to choose between germanium and arsenic. Both of them have average masses that fall within the expected range here. Germanium at 72.63, let's mark it out, and arsenic at 74.92. So to make the choice between germanium and arsenic, just remember our rule that the average atomic mass will be closest to the tallest, most abundant peaks. And here, there's three very abundant isotopes. Germanium's average atomic mass is right in the middle of all of them. Arsenic's is way too high and wouldn't make sense for these three isotope masses that are most abundant. So I can rule out arsenic as a possible answer and I'm left with B, germanium, 
This is the Mass Spectrum 4 GE. And that wraps it up for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Here's a brief summary.